But probably her favourite domain of all was whiling away time in the stables, the blacksmith and horse train. A wild and handsome art student, who was a regular visitor to the Jersey Road scene, <laughs> caught her eye. Dennis Allard was about to become Sheila's lifelong partner. It was in 1969, still passionate about early architecture, that Sheila was told by Peter and Carol Muller about a fabulous old semi-derelict house at Ilford. The house was purchased by Sheila, Matthew, and two other friends from Jersey Road, Tony Eady and Cabby Vine. In the early 1970s, Ilford House became something of an inspirational place for artists to stay and work. And there's plenty of evidence of those times on display around the walls of the house, with images by Martin Sharp and Brett Whiteley and, and, a, and a, lovely, a lovely study of the whole, of, of the whole ensemble by Peter Kingston. And there's one wall, I think, that's been, that's been held up in the kitchen by a large mural that Peter Wright painted way back in the early 70s. Anyway, then around 1975, Sheila, Den and Min left Pondry and took up permanent residence at Orchid House with Den creating his wonderful garden and Sheila with her black sheep, red dogs, horses and chooks, all woven into the now legendary Ilford House tapestry. Drawing on those experiences from childhood, Sheila created a world imbued with love and generosity. Once again, the front door was permanently open and there was always a pot of soup on the hob, a glass of red, and a cosy bed for the weary traveller. And Den Den for loving her so well. Such a powerful presence, the eternal Earth Mother, always sharing her bushcrafts with us and taking an interest in everything that we did. She was the absolute hub of our bush lives, and we're so happy to be part of the creative community that she gathered around her here at Ilford. She never tired of catching the horses for us and saddling them up whenever we wanted to go for a ride. So many wonderful memories of riding off on hot summer days at Pombi to go yabbing in the muddy dams near Flashjacks Creek, looking after potty lambs, which we crochet necklaces for, another thing she'll taught us how to do and the endless litters of cats and dogs that we would all take on as our charges to look after. We cooked on wood-fired stoves and watched boys chase the greasy pig at the local picnic races. Adventures were endless, such as picnics to the tops in Den's Daimler, which was such fun, but as Den recently said to me, every day with Sheila was a picnic. Our childhood with Sheila was sheer magic. All that adventure, and freedom and wildness and creativity we experienced with her and Dan got in under our skin and never left us. Our father, a dear dad, would try to educate us in classical European culture, but all we wanted to do was go bush with Bill, Sheil and Dan, help with the chooks, make candles, tie-dye, cook, climb mountains, and basically get a whole lot of dirt under our fingernails. So when Sheil and Dan came here to Ilford, we did too. Sheila was engaged with life. She knew everything about everyone before anyone else did. I don't know how she did it, but her bush telegraph was on fire. She cared about people and about country. She may no longer be with us in the flesh, but her spirit lives on in us. With every crop we harvest, with every cake we bake, with every child we nurture, with every animal we care for, with every op shop tre treasure we find, with every blanket stitch we do. We've got Sheila magic in us, or as Tess calls it, Sheilosophy. <laughs> and that's a privilege that we'll carry with us till we join her. 
John Harding, the Waratah man, who caught her in his Waratah fields. And her excuse was the rare white Waratah. And every year since then, he sent her boxes of Waratahs and one white Waratah. Thank you. I were breaking up after, you know, 17 years together, the one person I couldn't bear the thought of not being with was Sheila. And I had a conversation with her one day and she said, hi, Pen. I said, she said, I hear you and Matt have broken up. And I said, yes, yeah, Sheila, it's such a shame. She said, oh, darling, 17 years is long enough. <laughs> I'm not going away, I'll come back. We had the digging, now we've got the drone with mud. No, 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 not digging, the um, oh, burial. The burial, yeah. Simon, I have a carbon. I've got a four and a half year old baby coming in November, another one. So when do you want to eat this? Oh, it is Saturday, yeah. Thank God I don't have to go and work on a house. Thank God I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Wake him up again to play another dog. 